Welcome back to the absolute most professional StarCraft 2. The only way to describe a game where I'm introducing this, in my not so humble opinion, the greatest StarCraft 2 player of all time. In the bottom left, ranked one. It's the finisher, Cyril. And uh, quite a challenger, literally the best he could get. The best of the rest. Playing StarCraft 2 for 13 years, since the age of 13. Oh my God, I'm old. Okay, the man, the myth, the Malrith. A best of five, TVZ, between rank one and rank two. But the disparity seems to grow every time we see him face off. Cyril's gotten the better of him the last couple times they've faced. And it, it seems like he has a lockdown in every matchup that doesn't involve a Zerg on the other side of the map. So maybe if Maru switched to Zerg, now that would be something. But one more thing. It'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe. If you enjoy good games for the fans, if you enjoy the very best of StarCraft 2. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've had a good day. Jimmy, what What are we? 1,143 1, uh, likes. And I'll cast another series. And if Maru and Cyril keep facing off, oh my god, the Zerglings got in. How does this even happen? Oh, he didn't have the add-ons. Well. Um, yeah, Maru and Cyril is going to keep happening. And we're still going to have so many good games for the fans. Well, I hope you've had a good day so far, and I hope it's about to get a little bit better. Unlike the SCVs, who've already been pushed away from their task building one of two command centers. The Reapers have to come all the way back home. There is no speed on the way for Cyril, but instead of opting for the Roaches, the Reaper build with the early Reapers uh, has been popularized by Beyond and then perfected by Maru over the past few months. But Cyril has taken a page out of Dark's hand-scrawled manuscript. Um, and in blood, of course. But uh, and his rushing Roaches. That seems to be... It's becoming the the direct response to it. Instead of going for a quick three hatch, having some zerglings trying to chase down the reapers, instead, Cyril has been opting to get a bunch of roaches with speed out early. Because even against a bio army, just the mass marine style, the roaches are are quite strong early. Essentially, until there's medevacs or a lot of siege tanks, the brute force nature of the roaches, and they're built in relatively high HP. Makes it easy enough. Where are those queens going? Cyril? Cyril? You come back, friend. Cyril. Not exactly sure what he's intending there, but he does have... Oh, is he going to do a creep drop? Is he speed creeping? Overseer comes in. He already saw the third command center, remember? Oh, my God. Brenda, are we really doing this again? Feels like we end up walking across this map at least half the time. I'm... I'm I'm starting to lose. This is this is ridiculous. Why can't we just fly? Shh, shut up, Susan. Shut. Up. I <clears throat> sorry, I blacked out for a second. Cyril, with the creep boosting, using the quick lair, even though you don't get as many queens because you invest in a lair. You don't. Well, one, you can't build queens or you build them there. And two, you don't really have the resources or hatcheries. But he's using that lair and the overlord creeping opportunity in order to, to try to springboard his units across. And while the queens may get a lot of joint pain off the creep, eventually they'll get there. And the thing about this build out of Maori is it just simply doesn't have that much early on. He went 3cc with, um, and, and the Reapers delayed any, any real further production. So Cyril just knocking on the door. In fact, he's already knocked down the door. Thankfully, Maru built something of a secondary door, like a couch in his living room with a bunch of marines shooting out from uh, behind it. I don't, I don't know why I come up with these things, but uh, the the couple bunkers at the natural should be enough for now. The banshee cloak is done. No, he canceled it after the overseer spotted it. Oh my god! Oh my, what? The creep spread is ridiculous. And a contaminate these details, and like. These are things that no one else does. I have never seen any other player so consistently use the Contaminate ability. It pauses production for a little under 30 seconds. Not so helpful on like a barracks or a command center. 
but on upgrades, on key units like siege tanks, it can certainly make the difference. And now Maru has to be scanning directly outside of his base, clearing creep at his own third at the seven minute mark. It really does feel like, oh my God. So you know, I might as well go. Does he have overlord speed? No, he's just been wandering around. The overlord almost as slow as the Queens. I, I think we're going to spend a little time on the Cyril cam here. As just kind of getting a feel for it. it, it and it's so intuitive. Like, Cyril just doesn't make mistakes. I don't think Maru's made one. By the way, he just injected all his hatcheries. In case you're wondering what... No, he wasn't uh, misclicking. I was just setting up those injects. Sees the drop, sets things up. He, he split his Roach Ravager into two different groups here. Uh, to defend against the drops. More creeps right at the front, looking for an opportunity to harass the third. Almost takes out the Banshee. Not enough roaches in the main. Move a few back to defend. Pulls back in time. Drones through the corner. Metabolic boost about to complete. Maru finding a decent timing here. The roaches and ravagers looking for a better angle. Forces Maru to pick up. Queen's gonna find an opportunity for the creep again. Injects real quick. Hive is on the way. And, uh... Mario's keeping him busy, but look at the supply. Of course, neither player can see that in the game. Well, they can see their own, but you can only take a guess at your opponents. And right now, Cyril's perfectly happy to sit back as long as he can box out the dismal engines. As long as he can box out the drops here. Uh, all he needs to do is build up, get a whole bunch of banelings and vipers. Oh, he makes it look so easy. And, and Maru is really working the edges here, but only four medevacs. Cyril's already on a high. Well, I guess when you get a layer that quick, he's got 80 drones. Adrenal glands. Ragnarok! Ragnarok! Somebody get Ragnarok in here. Okay. If Cyril does it, it's a good idea. I think he can agree on that. If I see Ragnarok skip Adrenal glands one more time, I will be proportionally more upset. And by skip, I mean just not get it. 40% attack speed on Zerglings is, and I quote, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, Zerglings chase down the drops. The creep spread, it has receded from Maru's third, but it has expanded all around Cyril's. On both sides of the map, Ghost on the way already. Maru trying to get that, uh, some sort of later game composition. We got an Ultralisk Cavern on the way as well, but Cyril is about to max out. There's really no reason once Adrenal Glands finishes. There's no real upgrades. Maybe plus one melee to wait for. Marines are hunted down. Mauled. Uh, the ones who weren't able to get away. Maru now has 81 SCVs, so he's been... Uh, I believe he has eight barracks back at home as well. Yeah. He's got his eight racks online. He's got two two on the way. So there is a bit of a window here where Cyril is maxed out and Maru has yet to... to reach that, where Cyril can potentially smash the fourth. But, if Maru survives the initial wave, um, with his economy intact, well, then we got a game. But Cyril is still kind of coasting off that momentum from earlier. This will be the moment, as plus one melee finishes as he rolls into the base, clearly waiting for it. Plus one vehicle weapons is done, not even wasting the Bane Links. On the planetary, Maru tried to retarget with the planetary, but Cyril conserved those bane links for potentially another attack. Cyril attacked the moment his plus one was finishing as he rolled in, and that allowed him a full 15 second massive window before Maru finished his 2-2. Now the carapace upgrade is done, and Cyril barely lost anything. He refills for another wave. Maru supply blocked. He's got four command centers in production. Five command centers! Which, I, is he on a no supply depot challenge? The supply depot's right there. But at the back line, Binding Cloud hits two of the tanks. Ghost will wander up. And EMP not quite good enough. Binding Cloud's on the back. The, the, I think EMP'd his own medevacs there as well. Not that it's gonna matter. There's not much more to heal. 13 SCVs down. Vikings zone out the Vipers, but they've already done their job. Doesn't cancel the hatch. Where did these roaches come from? There's no cloak for the ghosts. And Maru. He has more command centers than units on the ground, and Cyril just wipes him out in game one. Wow. <sighs> mm. 
Well, Cyril makes Maru look like Maru makes everyone else look. And also breaks my analogies halfway through. That is just simply... I'm not entirely sure what Maru did wrong. But I, I think I can make a, an exhaustive list of what Cyril did right. It feels like he just grabbed the game. Even from the... Like, the game hadn't even started. Like he shut down the Reapers. The Roaches with some casual creep spread. The queen survived, by the way. He did, it's not like he did a queen all in. He just kind of planted his ravagers right outside the front door and said, uh, what are you going to do about it, Mara? And meanwhile, he was creeping all over the map with his uh, queen creep team. Which... Ah, the details. I do want to... I debated... For this series doing uh, an eyes of a pro gamer which i still never found a better name for it but as you saw there like the first person perspective which i think you can learn so much from it's very intuitive the way cyril plays it's just he just doesn't like he doesn't misclick or at least he doesn't enough to to really be noticeable he's already knows what he wants to do two or three steps down the line so even if he gets interrupted with one he can go right back to it the problem is and one of the main criticisms of those videos in the past is it's literally dizzying to keep up. Like, not not even, uh, as you can see here, he's just testing out, making sure he has those camera location hotkeys. The reason why pro players spam like this is not, it's like stretching before a football game. I don't care if it's freedom or non-freedom football. Do you just go in and whistle blows, which is, I guess, like the three minute mark in a StarCraft game, and uh, no stretching, no warm up. Uh, probably not a good idea. It's it's just to kind of be at that speed, at that level when you need it. Which neither player does right now, but it ramps up pretty quickly. I'm sure Maru's doing FCB something very ready. similar. Maru's actually doing some mining micro there. Which I'm not even going to get into because it's such a marginal thing. But for someone like Maru, it does matter. There's an extra like 5% of minerals. Oh yeah, I do want to do more videos like that do more casts even from the first person perspective but at the same time youtube hates it when you do different things and i think we've been doing a pretty good job with the uh, regular commentary so uh let me know um, and if there's anything that can make it a bit more palatable on a regular occasion i kind of like just mixing it into to the cast a little bit more than making it a dedicated thing but this time around maru <sighs> Maru with three CCs falls back. Not going to be going for the Reapers, just the Scouting Reaper. So a, a relatively slow start in Cyril. We'll be opting for Zergling Speed. I don't know how much of that is a reaction to Maru's uh, lack of early Reaper and how much is map dependent. It's kind of hard. It feels like you were filling it up from different angles. Um as well there's so much that factors in to the little details like uh how much you're committing even something that's remarkably nuanced but also incredibly subtle which is exactly the same thing twice or, or very similar but is what you do with the energy in your first queen of the natural do you go for a creep tumor do you go for the injects because if you start the creep very early you can really get it out there obviously very important but if you don't go for an inject then you might not have the Zerglings. Well, you just really can't threaten any sort of big counterattack. It does delay the Larva Inject on your natural significantly. Not as relevant against the non Threeper builds, but definitely relevant against the Threepers, because you won't have the Larva as quickly. And uh, don't get me started on Larva management, all right? That's almost as exciting as doing my taxes. All right? and, and those are confusing enough as someone who yells at people on the internet and has to try to claim that. Nope, nope, they're not donations. They're tips, all right? You do just... You know what? Not my problem. Not my problem. Larva management, more of my problem. And uh, Cyril's as well. But it seems like he's kind of solved it. So, just build more queens. Oh. Why didn't I think of that? Double Angie Bay from Maru. So far, he's been roasting around the edges. He got a drown. 
Hey, did he even get a creep tumor? He did not. He's just made things annoying for Cyril. Which is, you know, a start. But Cyril at 51 drums. Has he even started a lair? No, he's going for mass upgrade Zergling. So kind of almost a completely different style than the previous game, which is where Cyril teched up so quickly to the Road Ravager and then all the way into Hive. This time around, the Cyril is going to be kind of building out the Zergling upgrades and then working on his tech as getting the hatcheries for production and uh, the upgrades for efficiency are definitely more the focus. Yep, Maru finally. Mm, a few Zerglings come in. Gonna get a free uh, CV. Double Medivac headed out. I'm not sure if the Zerglings saw it, but I think he's suspicious. At the very least, finishes up the wall. Bit of an awkward one. I'm pretty sure he saw or, or heavily suspects the Medivacs. Yeah, here comes Maru. How's he gonna handle this? Setting everything up back at home on the edge of the creep. Cheryl just has too much. Getting all that production online. Zerglings will be dealt with. Mainling nest and two hatchers for Cyril. So ramping up that production and preparation for a very, very strong mid game. Just mass Zergling Baneling. And the Queen's for whatever spot defense he needs. Wave of Creep Tumors. The moment he pushes away those Medivacs. Does he have vision here? So it doesn't quite, but here it comes. The double drop out of Dan. 1-1. One, one, not quite done on either side yet. Actually, Cyril is plus one care. Just slurps up those Marines. And it will be dealt with for now. Plus one attack across the board. Plus one armor for Maru as well, finishing up. And that's going to draw us even. Lair is completed. Baneling speed starts. Ooh, good roast from the Hellions. But overall, going to get surrounded and killed. Cyril at 67 drones. He's not being stingy with the Zergling production right now. He's got 66 on the field and counting. 67 drones in total. This is a mass unit timing. Cyril is not interested in rushing Hive here. Instead, he's focused on crushing Maru before he can get that cost-effective army composition. Yeah, he's got 10 more drones on the way, but he's already got nearly 100 lings and banes on the field. He's about to be at 100 lings and banes. So he's making sure he can crush any sort of, of drop or uncommitted attack, or even if Maru sends his full army, you're going to be kind of hard-pressed to fight that much. So many Zerglings. And this is the most vulnerable timing for most Zergs. Before you have uh, the level of economy to just essentially remax instantly, this is where a lot of Zergs really struggle against Maru. When he's able to start getting the drops rolling, keep you continually running back to your base, and then eventually picking a fight that he knows he can win. But Cyril is not giving him any opening to start that momentum. He's preemptively made so many units that Maru just simply doesn't even... Like, it's not even close. He has no way he's going to get any damage done if Cyril's anywhere nearby. A, uh... That's a semi widow mind drop. There's so many Zerglings. Uh, yeah, Maru's trying it. He doesn't have Drilling Claws. Another attack is coming in. Maru is desperate to get damage on the Widow Mine. Ends up getting 24 kills. One more time, because who doesn't love watching Widow Mines connect? 24 kills. Meanwhile, this drop at the back. I didn't expect we'd jump back so far, but... Wait, how many of the... Oh, my. Oh, oh. most of them were Banelings. So that actually might be the hit that Maru needed. Another Widow Mine. This one's going to get dragged in and finish off the Marines. The Zerglings. And Cyril actually caught a little off guard by the Mines. The double drop. And that might be the opening that Maru needed. Now, uh, struggling to hold on. I, uh, well, not struggling, but Cyril definitely. That, this is the sort of momentum I was talking about. 
is uh, Maru has now opened up the field. Cyril goes for a massive counterattack. 150 Zergling. But a bunch of Widow Mines in position to deal with it. Big hits from the Mines. Wiping out Turret and Zerg alike. Maru double drop at the back. Another drop at the center. But Maru didn't close the gate. He's going to lose his siege tank a little prematurely here. But a Widow Mine hits uh, some of the Banelings. Both sides, devastating damage, mutually assured destruction. Cyril didn't lose too many of his drones there, and he only lost... Wait, he didn't actually lose any hatcheries. So Maru wasn't able to hold the counterattack despite doing so much damage on the other side. Cyril... Oh, without any banelings, though, and plenty of medevac. Somehow Maru supply bought again. Cyril does such a wholehearted evisceration of your production there's still a widow mine in the main a liberator has been and working on whatever it can get a hold of here the queens are, are scrambling back oh the mine recharges but Cyril deals with it finally the liberator is cleaned up maru did so much but he was complete well he was mostly unprepared for the the scale of the counter-attack from Cyril there and Cyril his priorities during that that semi base trade seem to have been on point. He maintained a solid drone count. He kept all his hatcheries alive, and he managed to whittle down Maru's economy significantly. So even though the econo uh, the supplies right now look pretty close, it's not going to be very long until Cyril pulls away again. If Maru's not going to be able to, Maru needs damage now, and he knows it. That's why he's sending these units out almost everywhere. Another mine drop. This one cleaned up, four drones with another, and it does distract Cyril for a moment. He's got to put all this together. He's got to deal with one more attack, because it's still a tenuous timing. The army supplies are dead even. Maru picks up. He's able to escape from the main brunt of the Ling Bane. He's maintaining this momentum on the field. Send some of the medevacs back, the ones that uh, need a refill of units. Cyril, almost done with his high. I don't think Vipers are going to be a, a massive boon in, in this situation, but obviously they don't hurt. Adrenal gland. Ragnarok! Just makes me upset. Ragnarok, the people zerg. Another attack to the left flank. Cyril struggle. Oh no, but so many Widow Mines caught immediately. One good hit on the back line does not make up for the five or six lost to a single group of Banelings. And Maru just not able. Ugh, small counterattack gets the damage done. There's a full energy overseer at the back. The medevacs and the queens are going to hold here. Transfuses at the last second. Keeping the queens alive. The drop comes in again. Still double, double drop out of Maru. Mings and Banes scramble to defend, but Cyril's got 16, 23 more drones on the way. He always has so much love. He's got a hundred Zerglings on the field. Maru can't keep his bases intact. He's he's doing great damage on Cyril's side of the map, but Cyril, his counterattacks are chosen very wisely. Oh, uh, and the Metavax finally go down. The Queens will knock him out of the sky. And still a hundred Zerglings. A Liberator? We'll force drones away. Maru is keeping Cyril incredibly busy here. Another attack. Widow mine. Maru's been slow on the Widow mine burrows here. And that has given Cyril the opportunity to kill him off before they can get that massive hit. Liberator looking for more. Cyril deals with it. Queens take it out. Another drop. I think that's still just the Marauder. Indeed it is. Maru's scrambling, but wow. He just taps out. Was there even anything on the other side? No. He just... There was no more to it. What a demoralizing game. So with a perfect counterattack timing. The Vipers were on the way. A lot closer that time around. But still, Maru left kind of scratching at the edges as Cyril went straight into the heart of his base. <laughs> Maru definitely drawing blood there. 
but it feels like a race against the clock. He's able to reset it a few times, but... All right. Well, 2-0. Cyril, off to a strong but not unexpected start. Maru, you see some shades of it there. My Maru is the best tarot in the world, but Sarah was just something else. I don't even know. Like, so Rainer has about a 50%. Um, uh, just for statistical reference, Rainer has a 65% win rate against Terran this year, against the top Terran player. Um, this is, I believe the stats were at the beginning of September, so that doesn't factor in this match, in anything, but 65%, which puts him at second to Cyril, who's at 92. Which is, um, he's so far ahead of everyone else. I believe Dark's at like 62, so Rainer 65, Ragnarok's like 55. He's so far ahead of everyone else. He's a statistical outlier. Like, if you were trying to look at, uh, at, I don't know, I'm not a statistician. I'm not here to do math. But he's so far outside the norm, and anything even resembling the norm, that you might just throw him out. Okay. He's, I think Cyril is approaching Wayne Gretzky levels of breaking stats books. Uh, if Wayne Gretzky had to play ZVZ, I think, um, he would have struggled as well, but that is really the only thing stopping Cyril at this point, or Zerg themselves. I don't know, maybe Maru's gonna turn it around, but that's another game where it feels like Maru didn't really do anything wrong. He just didn't do enough right. He hasn't tried the threepers again. I, I, you know, it kind of feels like Cyril has figured it out to the extent that Maru doesn't want to try it. It is uh, a more committed early game, but that looked like a strong and direct response from Cyril in game one. One that I will certainly steal and fail at, uh, as is customary. But the quick roaches into Hive and it gave Maru no opportunity. Now what? 3cc. Factory floats on over. Gonna take a seat on the reactor. Next two. Okay, team effort. Roach one, Lair. Cyril gonna, gonna fall back to the roaches yet again. I don't even know if fall back is the right word, but spring forward also seems wrong. Scuttle forth. There, I'll take it. Snipes a creep tumor and gets out. Clever Reaper micro. Couple Hellions on the way. I believe he spotted the Roach one, yeah. So Maru does know what shenanigans are indeed afoot. Stim and a relatively standard bio composition. Looks like he's gonna rush into siege tanks here, which should leave him in a better position than before without him. Siege tanks and, and bio are the way to deal with the roach timings. Uh, of course, it's always a numbers game. Overseer heading in. Another benefit of that quick layer is confirming your opponent's build so quickly. A lot of the time, like, it, with your... Wow. 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 <laughs> Infestation pit immediately. He sees the third CC. He confirms the... the Tech Lab Factory. Oh my god. Viking lands to kill a changeling. 
Is he just rushing hive? This not swarm host, right? Like two infestors in a hive is all the rage nowadays. Just something to slow him down uh, uh, right up until you can knock him out. And and Maru won't really have. Oh my god, a five minute hive. That may be the quickest hive I have ever seen. With the slight caveat of like in a real game, like in a game where it's not the only part of the build, but instead just, you know, another step on it. That Cyril says, oh, you're making siege tanks. By the time you get four of them, my vipers will be out. And I was like, what? I don't, I'm sorry. Do you have chrono boost? I don't need it. I don't. Getting zergling speed and a hive. Cyril is quite confident he can put together a defense before Maru could even threaten an attack. And the first medevacs are coming out. No infestors. There's 600, 700 gas. Those vipers are pretty gas intensive. Viking patrolling back and forth here. But, oh my. Wow. Adrenal glands and vipers? Well, he can't get a drill glance because he hasn't finished circling speed yet. I, I, but your hive, ultra lisk, rush, with viper. Like, there's no chance of ghosts. There's no hope of ghosts here. Absolutely, the quickest ultra lisk. And I think we'll actually see the ultras. Right, this is he's not building anything else. Is there a baneling nest? No. He's gonna get roach lang. Cell so right now is 15 roaches, which is still enough to deal with the uncombat shielded marines. This is madness. Cyril, feel, it feels like he solved it. Now, who knows? Maybe Maru... I don't know. Everything seems like it's falling into place. And he's even got the rich Vespine base. So, Maru not going to be able to punish that. It's not like Maru's slouching over here. He's got eight racks up. He's pumping out by him. Solidly off a of three base. Oh my. Yeah, and the roaches. He, did he see the hive? He has not seen. He's seen the infestation pit. And the. Well, he's seen the ultra cavern as well. He's going to try to hit that time. But Cyril's got five ultras on the way. At eight minutes with kite displaying adrenal glands. Oh my. I'm afraid the ultras are already going to be operational by the time your army arrives, Mario. That is a strong Terran army, but the Vipers have full energy. A single Viking here? Well, the one Viper. That is the only Viper if he loses it. So is willing to give up this base in favor of taking a better fight. Which I think is the smart move. Maru knows he is on the clock here. As every game against Cyril seems to be. But this one in particular. As the Ultra's Kitan is playing 12 seconds. Melee attacks 10 seconds. I don't think he can wait till plus 2 Carapace. Here. We. The Viper snuck around. Here we go. Viper in perfect position. Blinding Cloud from the back line. Hits the tanks as well. Here come the Ultra's. There's just too much. The Ultra's not going down easily. The last spot's a creep, but reinforcements from Maru. He might be able to hold the line. Plus two Carapace is about to complete. There wasn't quite enough. He kills his own Ultra with Corrosive Bile. And Cyril is driven back. He's not invincible. The Ultra's are taken down. They didn't have the armor. And Maru had the army. Maru continues forward. He hasn't built an SCV in several minutes. He's been sitting on 62 SCVs. The perfect amount to be pumping off a three base. It's effectively a three base all in here. But he's gained so much momentum. Is there enough energy? He just yanks the tank to the low ground. A subtle yet effective move. The queens are off a of creep, so they can't transfuse the ultras. But there are plenty of them. The ultras trying to close the distance. But off a of creep, Maru may be able to kite him. Almost out of energy on the medevacs from healing these overstim marines. But Cyril is unable to crush Maru's army in a way he may very well have wanted to. I believe we just saw a contaminate on the siege tanks. Maru cancels the siege tank. I didn't even know you could do that. 
You can cancel so that's contaminated. And now he's setting up the Liberator on the fourth base. The Ultralist timing is not good enough. Uh, the Viper still. God, he's so so safe with him. He snipes off two more. Parasitic bomb, though. Medivac quarantined immediately. Cyril now has ultra speed completed. Oh, my. He's looking to chew through Maru. Setting up... Wow, look at this beautiful depot concave. A funnel for the ultras here. And despite his best efforts, Cyril is not able to take the trades. And Maru holds. He's rebuilt some S... Well, he's built additional SCVs. And... Ultralists are on a timer. Well, the problem is... No ghosts. And just started 2-2. So Maru, while he, he holds the line and actually does a great job in whittling Cyril down. He's not quite able to translate it into a whole lot of economic damage. And that is going to be... The major issue. The Hero Viper. There's only been one Viper this entire game, but it's been so useful. He's just making so much out of it. Will he throw the parasitic bomb on these medevacs? He does. Maru. Maru. It won't kill the medevacs, but it certainly doesn't help things. Especially if it pushes them into the queens over here. But Maru still has such a bio ball to throw around. All of this without ghosts. Which... He's still getting a lot done, but as the Ultras get more and more upgrades, the Zerglings just slip through into the third. Maru cannot afford any economic losses. If he can kill a hatch and hold his own command center, well, that is exactly what he needs here. Maru spots the Ultras. We'll try to chew through. They're closing the distance. Maru's getting picked apart. The Kaiser Blade from the Ultras, which is one of the coolest names of things. Just chewing through the bio army. He's actually dragging the mines potentially into the medevacs in the ultra count. He's got nine of them on the field. Oh no. Playing without ghosts here is a very tenuous situation. That single Viking, 15 marauders, but nine ultras closing in. Blinding cloud could be devastating. Throws out a parasitic bomb. Medevac is thrown back. He has to chew through the supply depots, but well, it's kind of working here. The funnel for the Ultras. They're getting through. There's not that much bio left. Cyril decides he's breaking in this time. He doesn't care how many Ultras it takes. And at the end of the day, Cyril chews his way through in the closest game. But still, I think that can settle it. If you don't believe that defines Cyril as the greatest of all time. We've seen so many matches of Maru versus Cyril lately. And every time Cyril comes out ahead, Maru is great. And that actually brings us to our bonus match, by the way. Because I did want to make sure um, you guys were on the edge of your seats near the end there. Like, oh, Maru brings it. No, Cyril crushes through at the end of the day. But he's got another opponent. Ragnarok. Yes, Ragnarok has had some traumatic experiences in the past against Maru. From the same tournament here, I don't know if this is uh, on the same day, but, and I actually don't know, Maru may lose this game, but statistically he's had a much better shot against Ragnarok. I did want to get into the game because, of course, uh, we got to keep things going, but Cyril, honestly, that kind of felt like like how dark does sometimes like i don't know if this is gonna work but i'm gonna try it anyways like the hive rush there honestly i thought it was all coming together but then maru just pumped out the marauders and siege tanks <sighs> it was almost enough i think Cyril just uh the viper one single viper did what he needed it to do. Without that Viper, Maru certainly wins those fights, or or wins those fights in such a way that he can carry it forward to uh, doing real damage. Winning a fight but only having a couple medevacs of units left over is not enough to turn it around against Cyril. But yeah, I do want to, like, an actual uh, kind of question. 
And not that this is a conversation I bring up for um, more than engagement purposes, but what does it take to be the greatest of all time in StarCraft II? There were some players, MVP in Wings of Liberty, you shall life as well, one of the best, but Cyril now, for five, six years, has continually, with almost no, um, well, one, the big question for many years was Cyril versus Maru. Okay, it didn't happen for like three, four years because Maru specifically struggles essentially outside of GSL. He's had some real lackluster performances in World Finals. This was his year! And then Oliveira showed up and had the best day of his entire life. But it truly feels like watching someone. It, it feels like a Wayne Gretzky. Um, like, a, like a Michael Jordan kind of situation here. Like, we just need to retire Zerg. Like, it's Serral's. Um, okay, he, he solved it. Okay. <laughs> when he retires, there will never be another Zerg like him. I assume he'll retire to become like a... Either he will never interact with the internet again, or become like a... Uh, and fund his own space program or something. Off of the... Uh, cryptocurrency that he's been dealing on the side, making tens of billions. No, billions? Yeah, you know what? Billions. I'll go with billions of dollars. I thought I would come up with something more clever, but I'm not Cyril. Alright. Well, I, I, speaking of not Cyril, I'm, I almost zoned out and assumed we were looking at... No. Ragnarok, who, for some reason, uses... He, he still puts his name as Ragnarok on the tournament list, but uses his actual name, which is apparently Hebium. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's his ID and his account he uses on a lot of tournaments. Trying to become the next Jadong. Well, if you beat Maru, then, uh... That doesn't... That doesn't hurt. But another thing that, that Ragnarok likes to do that we didn't see a single game of Cyril even hinting at. Mutas! Yes, Mutalisks. One of the most iconic yet lackluster units in the current iteration of StarCraft 2. As... They are so incredibly fragile. They're very reliant on getting a lot of momentum going, and even then, uh, are easily taken out by a group of marines, a few mines, a strong gust of wind, it feels like. Oh my god, he just bounces to the queen. Really? Really, sir? That was very rude. Reaper tries to get in. So a very different take on it here, though. Was that literally the first loss? Wow. Some passive early games here. I'm like, am I, am I filling too much time? Is there actually action happening? I mean, the production tab and the builds, very interesting. But at some point, <laughs> I want murder. Okay, it's not murder. It's combat. With the added side effect of killing your opponent. Mutalisks. Murder list. No. No. <clears throat> but. Mutas are out, but Mara is already sitting on the edge of the creep. Not particularly much creep at all here for Ragnarok. In fact, he doesn't have any upgrades but flyer attack and baneling speed. But he's got to try to jump the army. There's no combat shield. And, uh... No upgrades for the Marines, so he may very... Ooh. Well. Nope. That did not go well. Um. It looked for a moment. Like, the Mutos might be able to combine with the Lings and, and make magic happen. But that was indeed an illusion. As now Maru 
Not gonna stim again until maybe he has the healing for it. As he doesn't want to risk going down so easily. And yeah, the mutas, he's trying to transfuse them. It looks like he'll eventually clean up the marines. But this is certainly... Well... Then a Hellbat drop. Well, that's nostalgic. It doesn't seem like this is... Like, Ragnarok is making a lot of progress with the Mutas. He's still going for it. It is almost a two-base all-in from, from Maru. He did get a third command center, but he didn't invest uh, in particularly many SCVs. So it's 52 to 49. So Ragnarok still has a decent shot here of uh, dragging this back if he's able to get anything done with the Mutas. But the Widow Mons haven't been dealt with out in the field. More Mons are going to... Bro, he gets one of them, which is very nice. Fire attack level one is complete. That is a pretty significant deal. But he almost flies back over the mines in the center of the map. Does he remember they exist? Oh, my. Oh, I don't think he does. He has no overseers on the field, which is a dangerous game he's playing. Gonna try to pick off some of these marines. I'm pretty... He, he may. There's a double mind drop. Armory is done, clearly. So, i will be able to burrow one. The second one might not make it. Ooh, gets the Zerglings. There's a drone here. Medivac being chased down. The Widowmine... Somehow the drone survives, of all things. That Widowmine, no detection alongside here. So, Maru... I'm going to be able to make some progress. 123 to 105 supply. Ragnarok very reliant on the Ling Bang getting some connections. Don't think he even canceled that edge. Trying to cut off the reinforcements, but Maru already has enough at home. The upgrades themselves, the 1-1. One, one. I mean, Maru doesn't have a huge amount of upgrades himself. He only has plus one attack, but plus one melee is denied. Zerglings drag out the mines, but that spread. I can't believe it's not a buttered biscuit there. And, well, Ragnarok cleans it up. But Maru already has another army of uh, equal or greater size. The mine... Oh, my God. Uh, nope. But wait. And another Widow Mine back at home. Just dislodging these with the Mutas. You have to have... I believe the number is 10 plus 1 Mutas to kill a mine before it fires. And, uh, you probably should have even more than that, just to be sure. And, of course, that does take some pinpoint micro. The Zerglings. Wow, Maru actually, kind of an awkward fight there. You're gonna lose several more Marines than he needed to, both to the Mines and to the, the Banelings. But he is gonna drag him back over. Alright, the Widow Mine takes out several more Mutas, but... Honestly, well... Hmm, Maru took out four marines as well, alongside that. The mines have, have been good, but not incredible in the grand scheme of things, as they've also done quite a number on the marine. And they're in back again. Maru gonna come back with the marines to deal with this. Delays the fourth command center. Ragnarok, it feels like really treading water here. Maru surprisingly unable to get very much done with the marines and the well. Underestimating, I think, the danger the Banelings pose, especially in these thin numbers, because he doesn't need to... Ooh, I think he retargeted the mine, but he's going to lose all the Marines there. Retargeting the mine again. Yeah, making sure it doesn't connect on those first Zerglings, but instead hits the Banelings, and finding a bit more success here. But Ragnarok doing a really good job of, uh, of keeping those mines busy and whittling down the Marine count. But he has yet to make... Has he killed a single... He's killed one SCV this game. Which is not exactly the amount of economic damage you want in this scenario. The, Zer the Mutas trying to cut things off. Lings and Bane's rolling in. Another mine dragged out. The Zerglings overrunning. But the Mutas and the mine splashes onto the ground somehow geometrically, magically hitting all the Zerglings underneath as well.
a scan. Maru's like, uh, am I further behind or am I behind right now? Like, uh, how do you have enough economy? Nope. He's just taking... It feels like Maru not as used to dealing with the mutas here. As he's taking these fights and getting whittled down bit by bit. But at the end of the day, well, the mines recharge. Welcome back. And Maru has maintained enough economy. It's just he needs to put together the right army. Ragnarok keeps being able... He keeps managing to get enough units to drive Maru back, which is quite impressive. But that's uh, not losing. And Muta, the Mutaling Bane composition, I think embodies this almost more than any other army in the game. Not losing is a long way from winning, especially with these units that struggle so much against an entrenched position. Here comes Maru. He's got plus two attack, working on plus two armor. Ragnarok pretty far off either of those things. And this time around, the Thor is a backstop. Juggle the Thor a bit against the magic boxing. And Maru grinds his way through, winning infinitely more games than he managed to get against Cyril. Bit of a different unit composition, but Ragnarok has found success with the Muta style, but it doesn't have that, that, it doesn't quite have uh, the room for error against someone like Maru. Though still surprisingly good against the small groups of Marines. But hopefully you enjoyed the bonus game. Hopefully you enjoyed our first series. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Cyril now. Because, like, it is so impressive to watch that it's almost boring. Which is not something I, as a commentator, should say. But um, that doesn't make it less entertaining, though. So hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I made your day a little bit better. Um, and hopefully, if you got the means and motivation, check out Patreon. Like, um, shout out to Creepy. That was our first super, super pylon. That's a, that's their name. That's what they put in there. So um, who am I to judge? Probably like Cyril. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck. Have fun. Stay tuned.